One of the first steps with getting a keyboard into QMK is knowing the switch matrix. Tracing the switch matrix can be defined as figuring out how the switches connect with each other and the microcontroller. I like to start with a simple diagram before diving into an actual circuit board. We'll be using Ruchimao's diagram from his PCB tutorial. In here, we have four switches arranged in a 2x2 matrix utilizing two rows and two columns. These components labeled K1 through K4 are your switches. These circles represent one of the legs of your switch. These triangles labeled D1 through D4 are your diodes. The component on the left is the microcontroller. In this example, switch K1 and K2 are connected together forming column 0, which is then connected to pin F4 on the microcontroller. K3 and K4 form another column and is connected to pin F5. The other leg of the switch is first connected to a diode. This diode is then connected to another diode, which is also connected to another switch. This forms the row connection. In this example, switches K1 and K3 are part of row 0, which is connected to pin F0. Switches K2 and K4 are part of row 1 and is connected to pin F1. Please note that the diodes will not always signify the row connection, and the leg-to-leg -leg connection will not always be the column. Let's apply what we've learned to an actual circuit board. For today's episode, we'll be reviewing the Porto Borgato from Trader Joe's at $6.50. It's got 19.5% alcohol per volume. This is a 750 milliliter bottle. And my initial impressions about it are that it's very sweet. I taste a lot of sugar, probably a, an oaky taste. This is a tawny port, which means it's been aged in the barrel as opposed to the ruby ports which are aged in bottles. I don't know what I'm talking about yet. But it's good. It's really good. I like it a lot. It's very tasty and I would highly recommend it, especially since it's only $6.50. First, you will need a multimeter. I have a cheap XTEC MN36, which I've linked down below. As long as it's got a beeping continuity checker, it will do. What is this? Basically, it will beep when two components are connected. Secondly, you'll need a diagram of the microcontroller the board uses. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using the HS60V1, a hot swappable PCB designed by Yankar. Let's start by finding the column. If you remember on the diagram, it will be basically from switch leg to switch leg to switch leg. On the HS60, we want to test these points. If you put your multimeter test leads on these, you should hear a beep. You can see that the switches from escape all the way to left control are all part of the same column. So, what pin on the microcontroller does this map out to? The HS60V1 uses an Atmega32U4. I would google up a diagram of the Atmega32U4 pinouts to use as a reference. On the diagram, you can see that it's got a little divot in one corner. Your physical microcontroller should have it too. Align your keyboard so it matches the diagram. The next step is really guess and check. With one test lead on a column pin, go through each of the microcontroller pins until you hear a beep. Finding the row pin and the switches that make up the row is similar. Let's go back to our matrix diagram. This will require a little more work. We need to test three connections here as opposed to the previous one. You will need to check the connection from switch to diode find out which diode is connected to what switch. Second, you need to check which diode is connected to what diode. Third, you need to find the switch connected to that diode found in step 2. On the HS60V1, these are the points we will check. You will find that the entire row from tab to pipe is on the same switch matrix row.
To find which pin this is associated with, hold one test lead on the row connected diode and go to check each pin on the microcontroller again until you hear a beep. This PCB was very easy to trace because it only had one layout, and the rows and columns pretty much matched the physical row and column of the board. Not all keyboards will be like this. Not all keyboards are this easy. Anyway, hope this video helped you understand what a switch matrix is. If you have any questions, feel free to jot them down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.